Little to work. Are you there? Now, you also notice, guys, I gave you a worksheet on exponential equation, right? And the last part of that worksheet, I asked you to solve by graph. This is what I expect you to use. But even though I didn't leave a space for sketching, but it's all right, just write the answers for me. Understand? So again, you can use both ways. You can either adopt what Elsin told us here by bringing everything to one side. If you bring everything to one side, can you guys go out for a minute? Excuse us if you're not ready to learn. If you bring everything to one side, you are discussing the solution of f of t equals to zero. And that is where it crosses the x-axis. That is the root. And that's why here, if you are ap apply adopting this, with your g solve, you just go to root, which is f1, I think, in your calculator. But another way is to you know, now separate it. If you are looking for the solution of this, just plug the left-hand side, plug the right-hand side, and find where they intersect. So in that case, when you use your g sub, you go for intercept. I think you have f what? f5. f5. First f5 twice. Does that make sense? And it will be right there on your screen. And once you get the same 19 point something, you have to draw your conclusion. Your conclusion will be, oh, it takes about 20 days for everyone in the school to catch the flu. If that conclusion is not there, you can't get your full point. Understand? Quickly, we have about five minutes to get out of here. Now, here, um, let's go straight quickly again. The weight of a radioactive substance after T. Now, I, I have one question. How do you know this model is growth or decay? If I give you, in general, from what we learned last lesson, our function, exponential function, f of x, is of the form p times a raised to power x minus h, I think, plus k, something like this, yes. where our p is greater than 0. OK? And uh, we, of course, we make sure our a is also greater than 0. How do I know this model is talking about growth or decay, represents a growth or decay? Raise your hand, no correct answer. How do I know it represents growth or decay? If I give you a question in a test and there is, um, what is it called? There is uh, maybe complete filling the blank space. And I say, oh, this represents growth or decay. Choose one. How do you know? I know, no chorus answer. Do you hear me when I said it? I know I classify this as decay because, of course, I told you when I was setting, putting it on the board. But how would you know? You see a real life problem, you are a scientist in the future and somebody came up with this function, it's talking about an experiment you are doing, how do you know immediately that, oh my god, this is a decay model. Oh, this is a growth model. How do you know? Not you? Let's try Yanko first. Um, when x is a negative, that's a power, and you know uh, it's decay. x can't be negative. Can somebody tell me why x can't be negative? Say that again. X is it's a changing variable, so why can't it be negative? You are not answering my question. Why can't X be negative? We are talking about the context of a real life situation. So X could represent number of days something is happening, right? How can you have a negative number of days? So X cannot even be negative in this context. Yes, quickly. How do you know it's a growth or decay? Joey. When x minus h is a negative value, it's a decay. When x minus h is negative, it's a decay. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Are you sure about that? Isn't it something that a is raised to a power and then there's a coefficient and coefficient? What are the coefficients that are going to be positive? It has to do with A. Of course, you can use that argument as well. But it has to do with your A. Simply put, when your A is a fraction, a proper fraction between one, 0 and 1, that's a decay problem. 
And when your A is greater than 1, that's a growth problem. Provided, of course, this remains positive. In the case where this is negative, so you can agree with me, you're going to have something like this. Right? Which is the same as this. So again, this is a fraction. Does that make sense? So if you are having a growth, whatever the base of the exponent has to be greater than 1. And if you're having a decay, the growth of the exponent lies between 0 and 1, provided we don't have this complicated uh, whatever. OK? And if I have this, it means my x should be greater than my h at any time. I'm talking about a real life situation. I'm not talking about a general exponential function now. Understand? So that's how you know. So in this case, the power on it is negative. As a result, this is more or less 1 over 2 raised to the power 0 0.03. Is that not? Yeah. So, so which is more or less 1 over 2, everything raised to the power of that. Yeah. So you can see that this is a fraction between 0 and 1. So that's how you know. So two ways you can look at it. If you have the whole number, the power must be negative. If the power is positive, this number must be a fraction between 0 and 1. And that's how you know you are dealing with a decay. And look at that of growth over there. 1.332. T is just the power. T can never be negative. And the base of T is a whole number greater than 1 already. That is a growth. So if this has to do with your financial plan, it means, yes, you are looking in the positive direction. If this is your investment, it means, yes, your investment is getting more, is getting bigger. All right? If this is a reductive substance, then that is wrong because it's meant to go down. Understand? So quickly, we, we have to leave now, actually. We are solid. Initia, what do we do for Initia? You do it yourself. You have done it anyway. For Initia, what did you do? T equals, T equals zero. When you want to find after 10 years, and you write the conclusion. Now, with these three, you sketch. And of course, you have a calculator too. All right? You sketch. Then I said use a calculator or graph. So just like what we did. But when you use your calculator, what do I expect it to do? What? Explain and draw the graph. OK, explain and draw the graph. So for example, if you say 1,000 times 2 raised to the power minus 0 0.0 t is equal to 10. Plot the graph of this, plot the graph of this, and look for the intercept. You don't have to say, oh, divide both sides by simplify. You don't have to waste your time. For example, when Yanko told us to divide both sides by 4, we could do that. It works. We can all see. But you can actually go straight from there. Just plot the graph of 1,200, plot the graph of 4 times that, and you're good. Or pick the 1,200 to the other side and plot the graph of everything. Look for the root on your calculator. But whatever you do, write something first. You see, I didn't plot the graph until I wrote down the equation. After I wrote down the equation, I plot the graph, I do the sketch of the graph, I, you will put a dot where you, the point you are looking for, write the number in that one, and make a conclusion. Don't just assume I know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. OK? So finally, there's one question I want to ask here. Uh, apologies, I'll let you go now. Again, all this, when it was initially placed, it is when t is equal to 0. Is that not? Yeah. Yeah. Then the rest is the same. How long does it take to be 0? It means when everything is equal to 0, then you can use either graphical approach or algebraic method. OK? But don't waste your time using logarithm. Just use a graphical approach. The question here, quickly, everyone. Will the temperature of the packet of peas ever reach negative 10 degrees? That's my last question of the day. Yes, sir, quickly. Uh, no. Why? Because 32 times 2 to the power of negative 0.2t can never be 0. Can never be 0. Do you agree with him? Yes. yes. But it can never be 0. That is not a good justification. Oh, and then I wrote afterwards, so therefore, uh, it will never reach I understand you, and you're right. But if, I'm, if this is a court, a court of law, or in the courtroom now, and I'm the defense lawyer, I can pick a hole in your argument. You said it can never be zero. Maybe you're referring to the asymptote. Who can tell me the, uh, the uh, you know, my, the, my argument to just counter or make him look like he has not said anything valid there? He said it can never be zero, yes? 
Okay, anyone quickly, quickly? It can never be zero. You never said it can never be negative. Oh, okay, maybe like, oh, okay. You said it can never be zero. You, you only exclude zero. Maybe zero is the asymptote. Okay, I give you that. But I'll tell you, my Lord, I never said zero. I'm talking about negative. And you lose. Am I making sense? Yeah. So his argument is valid, only that it can never be this part. Okay, this part is uh, always positive. That's the argument you should uh, use. Because this is always greater than zero, not because it can never be zero. This part is always greater than zero, so there is no way if the addition part, what you're adding to negative 10 is always greater than zero, there's no way everything else will be minus 10. Because you actually need this part to be zero, but this part will always be greater than zero. Am I making sense now? So you have to be able to write your justification very well. Oh, if you, have, if you want to write it properly in the exam, uh, will this be no? Because 32 times da 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 is always greater than zero for all t. And that is for, from the property of the exponential graph, right? It will never go below the y, uh, the x axis, okay? So since this is greater than zero for all t, therefore, t of t is always going to be greater than negative 10. So it can never reach minus 10 itself. It's going to be greater than negative 10. And another argument, wait. That negative 10 is what to that function? The asymptote. The asymptote. That's how you will know. If you never reach it, it's just going to pretend it's getting close. You'll never be close to it. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking your extra time. Can you shut that down? Uh, oh, this paper.